So good morning, uh, good afternoon um, to all of you joining. And I think we can uh, move towards the introduction slide. Uh, as you all see, I'm not alone on today's webinar. I'm with my colleague, uh, Pamela Lam. So I will give the word to you, uh, Pamela, to uh, kick it off from your side with the introduction. Thank you, Robert, and uh, hello to everyone. Uh, great to see so many of you joining in today with us. Uh, my name is Pamela Lam. I'm, I am from the, the Netherlands and uh, I have a background in uh, EU economic market regulation, uh, international law and human rights, and I'm an ESG facilitator at Nexio Projects for almost a year now. And uh, in this role, I uh, manage several projects of the ESG team. Um, yeah, really, uh, on Ecovaris, uh, yeah, services, for example, sustainability report writing, uh, gap analysis, uh, all of the such. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited uh, to be um, to be hosting this webinar together with Robert today. Super, thank you. And uh, indeed, um, my name is Robert. Uh, for some, maybe a familiar face, uh, since I'm hosting both of our Ecovaris webinars. Um, but great to have you all again on um, on today's webinar. Um, so my name is Robert Smith. I'm the sales lead at Nexio Project. So I'm the, um, in most cases, the first point of contact um, with potential partners to discuss their sustainability case and how we as Nexio can support them. Um, my focus with Nexio is mostly on, on Europe and, uh, and the United States. And I'm with Nexio a little bit over uh, two years now. Um, moving towards the next slide is today's agenda. Um, first, we're going to uh, go through our point of view as a sustainability consultant in the market um, before we deep dive into the Ecovadis methodology itself and how to improve your, your scorecard. Then, um, as I mentioned, we will take a small step back to quickly go through the Ecovadis model, um, deep dive into the Ecovadis scorecard, the method methodology behind it, how to improve your scorecard, obviously the goal of today's webinar. Um, then some tips and tricks, some best practices on the Ecovadis documents. Um, and then obviously some uh, final slides uh, on contact us is, is writing down here, but obviously also as a final step is the live uh, Q&A that uh, Pamela and myself will be doing. But maybe to set the tone for the meeting, go through, going through out of po our point of view as a sustainability consultant uh, in the market, um, we have some interesting insights here to share before we deep dive into the specific content on how to improve your Ecovadis uh, uh, score. Um, so, for example, what we will see here, I will obviously not go through all the, the statistics, uh, statistics uh, uh, formulated here, but one of the, of the stats that is written down, maybe the first one to highlight is one from Ecovadis, is that 90% of companies impact on, on, an, on the environment comes from their own supply chain. Um, Obviously, very interesting, uh, interesting stats from Ecovadis. Um, also, 54.7 billion uh, flowed into ESG funds by the end of 2021. We see one below, obviously. Um, and from our point of view, Pamela, I think we can both agree that, um, yeah, by framing the concepts, we see uh, this is not per se a trend, but really, really the future. And, and Nexio's contribution is also, uh, also referring back to our mission to help companies really from uh, compliance uh, um, and being compliant with, for example, frameworks as Ecovadis to to purpose. Um, Absolutely, you see it with uh, big companies as well. Now they really yeah. refer to Ecovadis and uh, want their suppliers to to have uh, a, yeah, an Ecovadis uh, rating. So that's definitely something that we see reflected in here as well. Yeah, and it goes for the suppliers as uh, as for the buyers. Um, as Ecovadis would uh, would formulate it, um, which brings me to the to the next slide, um, which is a poll where we're gonna kick off the the webinar with. Um, the poll is which pillar of the Ecovadis assessment do you find the most challenging? The poll should be launched uh, now, uh, where we obviously have the choice between environment labor, human rights, business ethics, and uh, sustainable procurement. Um, this is how obviously Ecovadis sees sustainability as a whole and uh, divided the four pillars within the, within the term. 
I almost feel like voting myself, but I can't, unfortunately. <laughs> what would you say uh, you find you think uh, people find most uh, difficult in in assessment? Oof. Um, well, being sort of on the front line, uh, but in my role, I I see a trend on sustainable procurement, obviously, which is the most uh, uh, challenging uh, pillar within the platform, and also in most industries, where is the most uh, weight on? Uh, within the assessment, but let's find out in the results, which I will share right now. I see that 100% of the participants answered. So thank you very much for voting. Here we go as well, uh, uh, Pamela, where we see uh, almost more than 50% finds uh, sustainable procurement the most uh, challenging pillar. Does it surprise you? No, I, I think we indeed see that uh, as well when we help our clients with uh, with the Ecovadis assessment support services that we do. Uh, you see that with sustainable procurement, there's a lot of uh, have will, goodwill to to do better there, but um, many questions as well as to how to uh, approach that. Yeah, for sure. Let's see, moving towards the next slide. Uh, and obviously, we will keep in mind also uh, the answers with regards to sustainable procurement to more put a little bit more emphasis on it, since it's the most challenging uh, pillar for uh, for the most of you uh, joining today's webinar. I will hand over to you, uh, Pamela, uh, for the next slide. Thank you, Robert. Indeed, before we deep dive into uh, the scorecard analysis, we just take a step back and uh, discuss the Ecovadis model. How do how does Ecovadis <laughs> Uh, define sustainability, where should we look at, uh, what are the, the most important topics uh, that, uh, that should be addressed. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, you already saw that in the poll, for example, we divided the questions in uh, the themes into four uh, so-called pillars, environment, labor and human rights, uh, ethics and sustainable procurement. Uh, Ecovadis methodology is really built and uh, continuously also updated on uh, international sustainability standards. Uh, as some of you may know, the UNGC, GRI and ISO, um, these are really um, the, the standards that uh, ECOVADIS based basis the 21 indicators per pillar uh, on. And as you see them listed out in this slide, those are quite a few. And um, some of those of you who have already undergone uh, an Ecovadis assessment uh, may also now think, hmm, these are not always all the, all the themes that I need to address uh, with my Ecovadis assessment. That is true. Uh, that is because it really depends on your industry and the size of your company, for example, uh, what indicators are so called activated. Uh, we call these activated criteria. And these are the most material topics uh, for your company uh, in the eyes of Ecovadis. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, this is, for example, uh, a comparison of, uh, of two industries where you very clearly see indeed the, the difference between uh, the, the industries um, and depending on the industry, there are different activated criteria that also your questionnaire will be tailored to. So um, you will find questions in the question, Ecovadis questionnaire uh, related to these topics. And if we go to the next slide, um, we see in the Ecovadis model, there are basically five steps that you go through during the Ecovadis assessment. Really with the registration already, you get, uh, you get to answer some questions about your company, uh, such as the number of FTEs, uh, your industry. And this is really the moment where uh, Ecovadis decides where to benchmark you to, uh, with, with the questionnaire that they, uh, that they create uh, based on indeed your industry and the size, um, depending on the full-time employees of your company. Um, this is also where you show whether you want to do a group or entity uh, assessment. Uh, and evidently, with a group assessment, this will uh, this will encompass the the entire group of uh, of your company. Um, and then the next step would be to to fill in the questionnaire uh, based on all the information that you have internally. Uh, after which you submit it and the expert ana analysis uh, starts. 
uh, episode of Ecovadis. Uh, they will go through all your answers and um, make a scorecard. And that will result in the results and improvements section, really the scorecard that we are going to deep dive into further in this hour, uh, where yeah, your, your strengths and improvement areas are listed. And uh, this, this, the fifth step would be really to, uh, uh, to understand that this differentiates your company. Uh, you, you really get recognized for your efforts as a company in your sustainability efforts. So uh, this obviously also has a positive impact on how your stakeholders uh, perceive your company as well uh, to be accredited or to be uh, recognized by, by an accredited uh, third party. Maybe uh, Pamela to, in addition also to put some extra emphasis on the registration phase, um, where we see with a lot of our clients, for example, that this, um, the way they onboarded themselves was not per se uh, reflecting their business and their business operations in the most optimal way. Um, but with other words, this is an absolutely crucial phase, uh, as Pamela highlighted, because the questionnaire uh, will be based on the industry that you select. Uh, with other words, if you don't select the right industry, it could be that you get questions that are not applicable for your company. Um, and you get benchmarked with other companies, um, with the other companies that are in the industry that you selected. Um, so absolutely crucial maybe to uh, relook into the uh, industry that you, that you selected um, to make sure that this is 100% or uh, as close to your business operations uh, as possible. Uh, and we are sure also Ecovalis is always open for discussion to, to look together with you if uh, maybe there's another industry that's a little bit more in line with your operations if you feel like it's not per se matching. Um, but this is a, a very crucial phase as, uh, as Pamela highlighted. Absolutely, indeed. Thank you for that addition. Shall we go to the next slide? Super, because we of course really want to deep dive into the scorecard with, uh, with this masterclass. Um, yeah, let's have a look at it. Uh, I'm going to go through um, yeah, four main uh, pieces of information that you encounter on the platform. I think the first, uh, the first part that you or I will immediately go to is, of course, the overall score and the per pillar score. Uh, we, yeah, this is obviously a fictional company sample. Uh, all of the screenshots that we show are, are uh, fictional com company uh, samples. Uh, and what you see is indeed uh, an overall score uh, as an average of the per pillar scores that you see next to that. Um, if we go to the next slide, we will go back to this slide in more detail later. No worries about that. Uh, but if we go to the next slide, then uh, we will see Indeed, the benchmark performance uh, information. So uh, there are there's this graph that shows huh, your overall score and how this relates really to um, all the companies that have been assessed by Ecovadis. So it really benchmarks your company compared to all companies assessed by Ecovadis. Um, and um, in the diagram next to that, uh, you also see that per pillar, uh, how, how you are performing, uh, basically. And if we go to the next slide, uh, we will also tell you a bit more about the strengths section and why this is uh, important. It's important to identify the best practices within your company. And in the next slide, uh, we will see uh, uh, that this piece of information is also crucial for for you to look at when you want to improve your scorecards or your sustainability management system uh, to go through the corrective actions that were noted down by Ecovadis. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe uh, also in addition to that, Pamela, exactly what you're saying and uh, what we see a lot of our, of our clients and, and happening within the platform is that most of the companies are only focusing on their um, improvement areas, uh, with other words, the weaknesses in their sustainability approach, um, to um, increase their score on the Ecovadis platform. But it is as important to also look at your strengths and keep your strengths strength. Um, so, um, for example, if you're, if, you're, if you're reporting as a company on sustainability KPIs, make sure that you do this consistently and also that those are up to date towards your next assessment. Um, obviously, the, the, the most of the actions are a strength and in most cases they stay a strength, but 
just to put some emphasis as well on that keeping it a strength is also absolutely crucial uh, and um, yeah don't fall into the trap of only focusing on on the on the improvement areas that ecovar has formulated no in, indeed it's uh, it's i think the rule of thumb is really to to improve on actually uh, all the activated criteria all the import the material topics for your company basically and to keep on uh, evolving in the sustainability journey so that's a very yes. important point uh, you're making and uh, yeah. we will also deep dive into how to look at uh, keep on improving your strengths basically and if we go to the next slide uh, something also important to to keep an eye on uh, when you look at your scorecard is um, the 360 watch findings uh, so this is basically public information on the company that can have both uh, positive or negative or even no influence at all on your scorecards um, and if we go to the next slide uh, another piece of information you would want to look at is um, it's all the way at the bottom uh, on the platform the specific specific comments uh, that the ECOVAS analyst made uh, while analyzing your answers. And uh, yeah, it basically um, shows a collected um, yeah, ECOVAS comments from your submission. And this is really impo important to keep an eye on uh, when you want to improve your scorecard as well. Uh, if we now go to the next slides, indeed, we're now going to really deep dive into uh, what we just looked at. And the first thing we're, we all look at is indeed the, the score, the overall score and the per pillar score. If we look at the sample, then we see uh, that the overall score of this uh, company uh, is a 58, which is decent, I would say. Uh, that would correspond to, with the silver. Um, maybe we should have shown a, a medal. I guess that would be the first thing we would look at uh, once we uh, <laughs> receive the results actually. Yeah, but yeah, after yeah. that, it would be this for analyzing the scorecards. Um, so yeah, and then uh, what is also interesting in this slide is that we see uh, different colors actually uh, in the scales. Um, these are also indicated in the color scheme uh, above. And you see that indeed, uh, if you're scoring really bad, there's nothing uh, identified. Basically, if you're scoring medium, it will be partial. There's quite some improvement there still. Uh, if it's going uh, the right direction, you would say confirmed. Uh, then it's like lights green and uh, so on uh, towards outstanding. That's, of course, what we all want to uh, be scoring. And um, also interesting here is the, the black bar in the scale that you see. Um, this is really uh, showing um, what are other uh, companies in your industry uh, scoring on average. So you see that our um, fictional company sample here uh, is scoring overall better than, uh, than average. And this is also reflected in the overall score. Um, so what is also important here is to really look at um, the little balls underneath uh, each pillar. Um, these show the weight that is, uh, that is allocated to each pillar. So um, in the Ecovalis methodology, the weight of the, the pillar will um, have more impact on your score uh, if it's if it's really uh, weighed heavily rather than uh, lighter, such as here we see in, with sustainable uh, procurement and ethics, there's only one ball that is less um, impactful than uh, scoring well on labor and human rights. Yeah, of course. I think actually, this uh, this example is from a consultancy uh, firm, I guess. Okay. Uh, I thought so, but because of the the minimum weight on procurement. Um, but we see actually in most industries, obviously there's there's more weight on uh, on the procurement pillar. But uh, in this specific example, not. And as Pamela then also uh, explained, then uh, this also has the um, less impact, most less impact on uh, on the uh, final scoring, indeed. Exactly, and um, yeah, and I think uh, it's also very important to say that uh, all the pillars are important. So. You don't you still don't want to score none or 
very low on partial unsustainable procurement if, if uh, the weight is, uh, is low for that pillar, for example, because under 30, uh, if, you, if you score under 30, then you will also not uh, receive a medal, for example. So that is uh, something to, to also keep an eye out on and uh, do not um, forget about, uh, yeah, improving on a certain pillar. Um, so if we go to the next slide, we look at corrective actions. Uh, and, and this is really where we can uh, learn a lot from. We can uh, see priorities for improvements, for example. And um, this is also really a section where we received uh, multiple questions from. Had prior to this uh, masterclass, we, we sent out a survey to ask you all to, um, yeah, to, to, to raise your questions that you might already have that you would want to hear about uh, during this masterclass. And, um, well, this uh, sheet was definitely an important one. As you can see, there are different colors uh, per corrective action uh, indicated. And uh, this is really to, to show priority uh, of, of the corrective action uh, noted down by ECOVADIS. Um, and these are also have the highest impact on your score if you decide to indeed improve on those. So for example, in this uh, example, you see that uh, no reporting on labor practices or human rights issues apart from KPIs in the questionnaire is indicated as a high priority uh, corrective action. Then it is advisable to work on this one to have a, uh, yeah, a higher impact uh, improvement. Um, and um, this is also really because um, had the, the, there's a reason, of course, for why it's a high impact improvement. It also has a high impact on your positive impact on sustainability. And um, yeah, if we look at medium and low, don't think that low is unimportant uh, to, to work on as well. Sometimes it's actually low hanging fruits. So it's actually an action that can be easily uh, implemented by your company, then surely it is, uh, it is very interesting to, to implement that as well, because it does have an impact on your score uh, as well. And if we go to the next slide, um, and then we look at the strengths again, as, uh, as uh, Robert also mentioned earlier, it's very important to also continue improving on your strengths, but also the strengths section is also important uh, because here you can, uh, you, you have your internal best practices basically. So uh, you can also um, derive experience, derive best practices from your own strengths uh, in how you are going to improve on the, those corrective actions, actions, for example. Oh, so this way the, the environmental policy, for example, was very a strong a strength then we can also uh, derive an example from that for our labor policy, uh, for example. Um, but yeah, very important to indeed also uh, improve on those uh, strengths and uh, to understand why they have been selected as, uh, as a strength and uh, to keep on reviewing uh, those processes as well. So you keep on getting recertified uh, because if you lose the certification, then have, that will have an impact on your score as well. If we go to the next slide, um, yeah, so here we look at uh, the corrective action plan. Uh, we're gonna look, it looks at how we can approach, uh, yeah, the corrective actions in the best way to have a structured um, approach towards uh, improving those. So it's really about uh, taking a step back and seeing if you really understand uh, what these corrective actions are. Uh, you can, for example, use your uh, internal risk analysis to get a better understanding of the specific actions as well. If and that, that is also corresponding to the risks that you have uh, identified internally. Um, and you can use this platform as an, uh, yeah, a live and ongoing tool that you can share with your team. You can share it with uh, trading partners uh, alike. Uh, but with your team members, you can share it to, to work upon the actions and uh, make a make a real life action plan. Um, so it's really dynamic, real-time action uh, planning here. And if we go to the next slide, 
um, again here uh, have uh, the higher priority, the higher possibility to improve your score, low priority, lower possibility to improve your score, but still important. But this can um, this can be important for for you to uh, set up the action plan uh, that we looked at uh, in the slide before. Uh, if we go to the next slide. Uh, and as you can see, you can take the, the improvement areas from the scorecards and add it also to the corrective action plan uh, tool as such. And then it is also uh, on the radar. <clears throat> um, so yeah, it's really uh, to, to sum it up basically, it is a simple tool that you can work on together with your team on actions. It is incredibly important to have this action plan as a roadmap. You can include your suppliers into this also to show where you are working on. And uh, yeah, you can also uh, maybe put it in Excel if you want to, uh, if you want to distribute it internally and take the action to really combine the high, medium and, uh, and low actions and uh, take this in a sustainability improvement plan as a strategic uh, plan. And if we go to the next slide, I think it will be interesting to send out a poll again. Yes, indeed. Um, so also from our perspective, we are very curious on um, the different medals uh, and different companies that are participating in today's webinar. So we want to also launch a poll. What is the current, what is your current Ecovadis uh, score? So um, the poll has been launched, so we are very, very curious to, to see the division between no medal yet. Could obviously be that you have not done Ecovadis uh, before, or you're a little bit performing below the, the medals. Uh, the bronze, silver, gold, or top 1% uh, platinum uh, medal. So I see already that 64 uh, people uh, participated on the, on the poll. So we'll wait for a couple of seconds more. I will. I want. I hope that those uh, with no medal understand uh, indeed uh, what we are talking about when we look at the platform. But uh, otherwise, it will soon enough be uh, be become clear. Yes, and also know obviously the recording is available always afterwards. So, if you still are in the onboarding process of Ecovadis um, and you're not per se now in the platform, you can always look back at the recording and, and look through Pamela's uh, explanation of the different. Uh, Tools. Um, I will close the poll. I see 76 people voted. And I will share the results where we see a division between no medal, but bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Um, interesting. Uh, most people are silver rated by Ecovadis. Um, I see still three companies, even though they have this platinum medal already still participating at today's webinar um, and looking for interesting insights to improve and better understand their uh, scorecard. So it's amazing to have you all in, the, in today's webinar as well. Um, but obviously same for, for gold, silver, bronze and no medal, um, but interesting uh, uh, to have the insight as well. Definitely interesting indeed. Uh, there can be some um, knowledge exchanging uh, going on here in the probably. <laughs> indeed. Um, Talking about the medals brings me also to the next slide where we have an update for you. We also shared it in the previous webinar, um, but before we entered 2022, the scoring was a di bit different because from the 1st of January onwards in this new year, Ecovadis changed the scoring system. So th th this does not mean if you have already an existing medal that it will change. But for the upcoming assessments, then the scoring is a bit different. Um, so bronze starts from 47 onwards instead of 45. And then for silver, the same, two points higher. higher. For gold, goes up one point. And platinum, again, goes up with uh, two points. Um, so obviously, very interesting insight on the Igovadis medals, uh, rewards that we wanted to, uh, to share with you. Um, and obviously, if you have any questions on this, please Again, don't hesitate to use the Q&A box. Um, I already see that 16 questions are in, um, um, but obviously wanted to share this uh, insight uh, with you. Yeah, we love to see medals, I think. 
Yes, of course. Um, Pamela, over to you for uh, a specific overview on, on how to improve. Further improvement tips. Uh, yeah, now we're going to actually deep dive into how what's uh, what's uh, once you've indicated your corrective actions, and there are, for example, policies and uh, policies um, corrective actions to be made or actions measures or reporting measures. Then, what does this actually mean uh, for uh, your rating and again the impacts uh, of that? So what we see, for example, here is a division in. Uh, again, weight, but then per, uh, yeah, how do you call it? Um, um, yeah, sustainability management uh, uh, criteria. Or, criteria, yeah, indeed. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. And uh, yeah, we see, for example, policies had is, is rated with a 25%, uh, actions has a 40%, um, and uh, results 35%. Uh, so really what, what is now important uh, for your policies, it is important to be able to showcase that your policies include uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, objectives towards sustainability. And uh, it is advisable to, uh, to take ECOVADIS and the Corrective Action Plan really as a, as a guidance for, for improving your sustainability uh, management system. And therefore, it is interesting to take policies per pillar and uh, to at least ensure that uh, your qualitative and quantitative uh, objectives of the policies are also connected to all the activated uh, criteria of, uh, of, uh, of your company. And uh, yeah, the best uh, way to, to write down uh, quantitative uh, targets or adopt them are those that are smart. So really specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and uh, time bound. And um, also what is, makes a policy optimal would be to have uh, included the scope of the policy. So who does the, to whom does the policy apply to? Uh, what measures are in place to achieve those, um, those stated uh, objectives and also to have a, a reporting section to, to showcase that there are KPIs uh, attached that you use to monitor the progress on those uh, quantitative objectives, as well as a governance uh, section on roles and responsibilities uh, where accountabilities uh, are assigned for those policies. Uh, it's also interesting to look at endorsements, how really uh, those external uh, CSR initiatives and principles such as the UNGC, it may be interesting to have a look at that, uh, or the SDGs uh, to be endorsing those that have as an impact in the policy section as well. For measures, uh, we are really talking about actions, uh, procedures that are implemented, trainings, as you can see in the slide as well, uh, as well as certifications, uh, such as the ISO 14001, ISO uh, 45001, you name it, uh, those that are in, uh, in your questionnaire, basically. Uh, but also, and um, mostly important for uh, extra large companies and um, group companies is uh, the coverage uh, in that to show that uh, all your entities um, have also adopted the policies and procedures um, that you that you included in your assessment. Um, this was on actions and then also reporting is uh, very key uh, to, to align your key performance indicators again with this objectives and to monitor that uh, annually. And then the 360 news, uh, as we, uh, we said before, that can have positive developments, uh, but it can also have condemnation. So it can be a positive effect on your uh, scorecard as well as negative or nothing if, uh, if it's all neutral. Um, if we go to... Oh, yeah, maybe one more, one more point, uh, Pamela. Is it really, if we talk about a sustainability management system, this is how Ecofathers defines it and what they want to see uh, for a company to move towards the higher end of the medals. Obviously, we see in, uh, for example, uh, companies compliant with a bronze medal, a silver medal, that um, one of the two pillars or two of the, of the three pillars uh, are... Um, performed really well but for example then on the reporting it's a little bit lacking still so if you really want to have the ambition to move towards that gold or platinum stage within ecovadis 
This is the sustainability management system where Ecovalis is talking about a little bit the back end of the methodology where they are looking for uh, within company structures. Um, so I just wanted to put a little bit more emphasis on it, uh, Pamela, but uh, you explained it perfectly. But just for the participants knowing that this is exactly uh, the insight uh, that we want to give to, to show you also that um, this is actually one of the most important slides within today's webinar um, to give you the insights on the, on the Ecofiles methodology and, uh, and the scorecard. Uh, Absolutely, this is really the how. Huh? Uh, so if you have the actions, how do I then uh, improve those? So yeah. that's a very uh, good point you're making. Um, and then we go into the documents uh, section of, uh, of today's uh, masterclass. And uh, yes, um, we are talking about uh, documents created on purpose. So uh, Ecovadis is really there to, to, to be that uh, trusted third party to, um, to provide a recognition for companies that really uh, put effort into uh, becoming sustainable. So Ecovadis also has a rigorous uh, program in place to verify the integrity of evidence that is uh, that is handed to them during the assessments. So and the Ecovalo scorecards are very useful as a guidance for companies, again, to improve their sustainability management system. Um, and we would advise to, to not create uh, documents during the period of your Ecovalo uh, assessment. Uh, this will be uh, detected and rejected, and that would be a, a pity. So make sure to, to um, improve your management system um, before uh, going into the Ecovalis assessment and have uh, everything adopted and formalized. And uh, then uh, we look at the section on absolute information, uh, some of the requirements as well uh, that are important to, uh, to take into account when you adopt, uh, when you upload uh, documents is that you have to make sure that policies or actions over uh, eight years old will be rejected um, by, by Ecovadis. Uh, this is just a bit too old. Make sure to have, revise your policies. Um, this is also just to keep them live, to keep them relevant. Uh, so also important for your, for your company. And also reporting KPIs over two years old is, uh, um, yeah, will not be accepted as, a, as good evidence and rejected uh, as such. Um, and outdated documents are considered uh, obsolete and will not be taken into account uh, for the evaluation either. And I think that's, uh, that's evident. Um, if we go to the next slides, then we uh, go through some key takeaways. And um, yeah, just uh, had to, to summarize, be authentic and make sure that Ecovadis is part of your bigger picture when it comes to sustainability and not uh, just a tick in the box exercise. Uh, really use the ex ex corrective action uh, plan as a, as a guidance um, to improve your sustainability management system and will, this will really benefit your company uh, as a whole. And um, yeah, engagement is, uh, is key, of course. Uh, try Make sure to involve uh, your team, make sure to involve the relevant employees uh, in the Ecovadis uh, documents gathering exercise that you that you do uh, in preparation of the Ecovadis assessments. These are people from HR, finance, legal and compliance, risk, procurement, product owners, you name it. Um, but yeah, also key here is to make sure that the highest management is involved to demonstrate really the importance uh, of the exercise so uh, that's, uh, that it doesn't get uh, swallowed by, uh, by everyday uh, also very important business uh, activities. Um, and then the structure of your approach is, uh, is important. Uh, your sustainability management system should uh, be structured with those policies, procedures, and reporting uh, to, to improve that uh, over time as well and to keep that life as we discussed. Thank you, uh, Pabla, uh, very much. So moving to the, to the next slide is um, a little bit more on the uh, Nexio side. So obviously Nexio Projects is the uh, global uh, support and consultancy partner of Ecovadis. Um, and know that we uh, are absolutely here to support you as well with that extra push towards the right direction with understanding your, your scorecard. 
Um, so within next year, we have our EcoVadis Insights uh, Report uh, Support Service where we help companies with understanding their scorecard, um, translating those high level feedback um, into practical actions um, for your organization. Um, so please do know that we are here to help you and please don't hesitate to reach out after the, after the webinar to um, one of our uh, commercial team members or myself um, to start a conversation. And uh, we are absolutely here to, to guide you towards the uh, improvement of your EcoVadis uh, scorecard and bring you that little extra understanding uh, with regards to the feedback from EcoVadis. Uh, which, which brings me also to the next slide, uh, which is a, a very specific poll. If you as an organization are looking for any support services uh, from, next, from the Nexio team in terms of EcoVadis. Um, so I will share the third poll. There are a couple of uh, options which I will explain. There's an EcoVadis assessment review where the Nexio team could review your EcoVadis assessment before you submit it on the EcoVadis platform as a sort of a final check before you submit. Um, Completion is where we take, hold you by the hand from A to Z, but collecting the right documents, selecting the 55 documents that are applicable for your EcoVadis assessment towards the submission itself. Um, the assessment insights report, which I just presented, where we really translate those high level feedback uh, points from EcoVadis into um, practical uh, action points for your organization or any other service, uh, obviously from the Nexio team where we uh, are the EcoVadis uh, support partner, but also can go beyond on that sense where we have reporting services where uh, Pamela is also specialized in or common footprinting, uh, you name it. Uh, please don't uh, hesitate to let us know. Um, I see still some responses coming in, so I will close the poll in a couple of seconds. Um, and after the, the results uh, uh, are here, we will obviously jump directly into the live Q&A where we will uh, deep dive into your questions where I see there are 20 questions waiting for us, Pamela, in the in the box. Um, so I will close the, the poll. And then we can uh, move towards uh, the live Q&A. Um, one thing I want to mention, actually, I think we, our colleague Margarita asked us to not forget about it, uh, Pamela, is that we, uh, obviously mentioned that she will share a link in the chat box with regards to uh, your opinion about today's webinar. So please don't hesitate to click on the link and directly after the webinar, if you have some time uh, for us to uh, leave us a, a review or some feedback on, uh, on uh, today's uh, masterclass for the webinar. Um, but I think we can directly deep dive into the, the questions that have been asked in uh, the Q&A box. Um, yeah, I see uh, quite see. a few. If you already <laughs> see one, Pamela, please feel free to, to pick one. I'm like um, scrolling up and down. Uh, I see here one, for example, uh, yeah. from uh, uh, Jill Knights. We are updating the corrective actions, but are not sure what date is, uh, is what is that we should be using when completing uh, this part. Um, I think. Uh, ha make sure to to have completed your corrective actions or at least uh, some of those uh, that you want to have completed before your uh, corrective uh, before your corrective so many corrective actions sorry uh, before your ecovadis assessment uh, that that would be a good date to to consider uh, in mind when you uh, when you uh, update your uh, improvement areas um, do you see an, another question that yeah uh, yeah, for sure. Me. Yeah, I can tackle one uh, more on the practical side from Justin. Uh, also, get that. I see a couple of questions for Justin. So, thank you very much for the engagement on uh, on your side. Um, can you confirm the average response time um, for EcoVadis to assess the submission and provide feedback? Um, I know a couple of years back it took EcoVadis only six, between six and eight weeks, but uh, obviously the number of companies who are going through the EcoVadis assessment is growing very fast. Uh, so it takes EcoVadis now around 11 weeks to come back to you uh, with the score and provide you with the feedback. Um, and with other words, with your medal uh, link to the uh, performance in the questionnaire. So 11 weeks is, uh, is the answer uh, 
uh, to that, Justin. And then maybe I can directly tackle another one, uh, which I see from Tanya. And also, Pamela, if you have some additions from your side, please jump in. Um, how to improve if many documents are only at group level um, because of a metrics organization? Um, so maybe one thing I want to also put a little bit emphasis on, and I see also this is an answer to a couple of other questions uh, with regards to uh, documents that you are using and you're not per se uh, knowing how to frame this towards Ecovadis. When you upload a document, this can be a group's policy, a group's procedure, uh, but also other type of evidence uh, in the Ecovadis platform uh, linked to a certain question. There's always the opportunity to use the comment box to give contact to the uh, context to the Ecovadis analyst. Um, so, for example, if you have a specific group policy that you're using as an entity uh, and you want that to use the document as a reply to as a response to one of the questions in the Ecovadis platform, use that comment uh, box to explain to the Ecovadis analyst who will be reviewing your assessment why and how you use this policy or procedure from the group uh, as an example at an entity level. Um, and also, if this is a huge policy, uh, but there's a, a section within the policy that actually answers the question itself, then also use that comment box to refer to a certain section within the policy, uh, which is absolutely crucial. Um, and also lots of points are, are lost on, on, on that sense, because if you, for example, upload a 50-page policy, the Ecovalence analyst will look a couple of seconds for the answer, but it's not obviously going to read the whole policy searching for the one sentence that's answering it. So please then uh, uh, make use for different types of, uh, of situations of that common box, which will help you a lot as an organization. I don't know, Pamela, if you have any addition uh, on that step from your side. No, I think you also explained indeed uh, also very well that the comment box is uh, very, very important uh, to use to also indeed uh, provide a direct answer to the questions posed in the questionnaire. Uh, and if you do have, for example, additional uh, evidence that shows that those those uh, group level policies are really implemented within uh, within your company, for example, with uh, communication uh, towards uh, the employees at the entity level that could also, for example, showcase that and uh, an organogram uh, doesn't hurt either. Um, and I see here one from a anonymous attendee about uh, how do you best provide evidence documents to Ecovadis to manage within the 50 doc uh, limits, especially when they need proof uh, for coverage across sites. Um, so that's a very good question. Um, just to uh, make a little correction, it's 55 documents, but I can imagine that those five doesn't do it uh, either <laughs> necessarily. Um, what we do is uh, we uh, let's uh, let's first um, be clear that it, it it's the best to show with the clearest documents and not too many uh, documents that aren't per, per se relevant to answer a question. So to um, upload those documents to answer a, an ECOVAS question because those are proven uh, more easily uh, to be true or to be uh, relevant to the question. But uh, you can also combine certain uh, documents for uh, for example, a certain activated criteria that you combine a few uh, documents and uh, refer to the page number in the comment boxes uh, on the platform. And uh, for coverage across the sites, uh, show with two uh, to three examples uh, that the, that the um, procedure or policy is indeed uh, uh, applicable to, to multiple sites uh, or uh, and or uh, use a KPI dashboard that shows coverage. Super. Thank you, Pamela. Um, I see one uh, question from uh, Joe Sanders. Um, thank you, Joe. I, I see with, re with regards to the 360 work report, is there any, uh, if there's a very negative one, why does it stay on for seven years? Uh, given a lot of time uh, will have elapsed, uh, it seems quite excessive. Um, it's hard now to improve our score and it's out of our control. Um, we will also never gain a medal, cert uh, a medal certification. Why that's showing? Um, I totally understand your question and uh, also a bit of the frustration on that sense with regards to the 360 watch, which we hear obviously a lot. And uh, seven years is a long time. 
um, what we would recommend if you feel that the 360 watch is not per se applicable anymore, uh, anymore for uh, your company and you uh, feel like it's not per se reflecting um, your company um, because it is already there for a couple of years. Obviously, the rule is that it's the, it stays for seven years and Ecovadis doesn't make a lot of exceptions, but there's always the opportunity to talk to Ecovadis. Obviously, we are not Ecovadis, so we can unfortunately not look into this and potentially change it for you. Um, the rule is seven years, but Ecovadis is always open for discussion. So, Joe, I would definitely recommend you to open up the discussion with Ecovadis and see um, if there's anything that uh, can be done. Yeah, and indeed, if you... If your company has, for example, also uh, conducted remediation actions uh, to redeem that uh, negative uh, publication that it's about, uh, then also showcase that to Ecovalis. Uh, it might uh, help in your case. Yeah, I see maybe one more question from Katie, and then I see Pamela, you have another one, so you can tackle the next one. Um, can you share the weight per focus area? Um, this is obviously very tailored per industry, uh, Katie. So um, per focus area, um, the weight is different per industry. So uh, depending on the industry you select, uh, there's a different weight on a different uh, pillar that uh, is uh, um, attached to the industry that you select. So this is very tailored. Uh, and obviously we don't know all the hundreds of industries in the Ecovalis assessment uh, platform on top of our head. Um, but obviously happy to look into this after the after the masterclass with you one-on-one -on -one if you uh, would like. Absolutely, indeed, uh, that would be a good idea. Uh, I have here uh, one from Jeroen Diepgrond. We decided to endorse UNGC starting this year. It happens to be during our reassessment, but it's not on purpose for our assessment. Will it not be considered regardless? Um, I think in any case has showcased that you have indeed endorsed the UNGC with, uh, with the UNGC letter. Um, because it is an external um, and official um, action that you've that you've done and uh, let's see if they if they indeed consider it regardlessly um do you have do another you have question that you would like to there are a lot um so i'm scrolling um I think here Derek also in uh, his first one of the first questions is why are group documents often not allowed? We are a global group and often have a high level uh, policies that, that cover all locations. I think we covered this a bit already in uh, in uh, the answers that we pro provided before. Um, uh, try to also showcase that it is uh, indeed implemented. Um, not quite sure about group documents, uh, group policies, and um sustainability reporting uh documents can be um yeah accepted on the group level but maybe like actions set um showcase for for example if you have a training that you conducted within your your entity um then showcase that with uh with a participation uh list um really the actions are more entity focused that those are really Im uh, implemented there as well Um, I see one more question from Patricia, uh, who joined a little bit later, but she would like to ask if there are any changes on the questionnaire for this year. Um, obviously, again, industry specific, but I think Pamela, we can agree on that we see an obvious trend on the environmental pillar. There are definitely some, uh, some question, questions uh, added, um, more on the climate side. Uh, and also um, what we identified is that, for example, within labor human rights on diversity, the number of uh, questions has grown. Um, but for the rest, um, yeah, obviously, Pamela, you're more on the operational side, but I don't per se see a, a specific or uh, an overall trend on uh, specific uh, changes in the questionnaire for this year. Do you? No, I haven't uh, haven't either. Just one thing that uh, that we had insight on is that um, there will be a, 
a different wording for diversity, discrimination, harassment, uh, which will be more positively uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, but uh, indeed, no, uh, no difference uh, or new questions on that uh, side. Um, I see. Do we still have time for a question? Yes, we, we can do uh, one or two more. Uh, see, we have a minute left. So then, uh, obviously, we respect everybody's time. See here. Uh, one came in, Ruth uh, Doman uh, asked, would screenshots for from external platforms, for example, showing compliance with uh, REACH be acceptable for Ecovadis? Um, if you can prove that your company indeed uses this uh, external platform, uh, then screenshots uh, can uh, be a proof. But really make sure to have that connection, that, that it is really clear that, uh, that there's a connection with your company and uh, those screenshots, uh, basically. Super. Um... Yeah, I think um, obviously there are a couple of questions left still, but obviously we want to respect everybody's time in uh, today's webinar. Um, so I think we're going to round off, Pamela. Um, from on my behalf, I want to thank everyone for, for joining today's webinar. Um, in the chat box is the, is the feedback form. So again, please uh, feel free to leave, leave us in a review and uh, give us obviously some feedback on today's webinar. Um, or think along from some ne next topics where we can host a masterclass on. So we are always happy to uh, hear from your side. Um, on my behalf, thank you very much all for joining. Have uh, a good rest of your day uh, and hopefully see you in, uh, in the next webinar. Thank you everybody so much for participating in all your insights book or valuable questions. Uh, it was uh, very fun to, to do, host this uh, together with Robert. Thank you very much.